It's time to address the dangerous conspiracy theory that's ripping America apart at the seams. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but, but to hear the media talk about it, you would believe that QAnon is some crazy, insane thing about cannibals and violence and domestic terrorism, and that is just not true. Now, I am not a huge Q guy or anything like that. You don't really hear me talk about QAnon on the channel, but I have looked into it, and I have looked into it in pretty good detail. And I do have several friends that are diehard Q people. I mean, they, they really believe everything is real, and... I think it's time that we address this because it's starting to become more mainstream. It's starting to be in the news. You're starting to see the press ask Donald Trump about it. Now, my personal take is that QAnon is a rather hit or miss thing. It is not entirely baseless, but there are the, the way that it works is you have this guy Q who most people believe is naval intelligence and he drops these kind of cryptic posts that sends people in directions to research. And those are the Anons. And they come back and, they, and they, they put their research together and they form sort of a bigger picture of, of what's going on with the deep state and all of that. By and large, it is sort of a... The, 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 the media always frames it in terms of pedophiles and cannibals and all, all, of, all of the fringiest parts of QAnon. But really, the way you could describe QAnon is that the, the different it's people researching the different methods in which Trump is actually trying to live up to his promise to drain the swamp. So, I mean, Q QAnon, sure, th th there are some people on the fringes that think that there are people that eat babies and, and stuff like that. And, you know, that's the kind of stuff that I don't really I don't really get into. I don't really buy into that's it's 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 it, it, it does get a little bizarre. But there is also parts of QAnon that talks about things like Obamagate, which we know are true. So it, it is a wide range of ideas, and I think what the biggest issue is that it's pro-Trump. That is why you see so many people going after it so harshly. And again, I'm not, I'm not this big Q person, but I am sympathetic, especially to the way that they're being treated. It's kind of reminiscent of what we saw with the Proud Boys. So the Proud Boys cropped up, at, and it, they started out as a joke. I mean, Gavin McGinnis started the Q Boys. I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry. Gavin McGinnis started the Proud Boys. Basically, as a joke to have a to have a men's fraternity club because you know men used to have all you know the Elks Lodge and all these different men's fraternity organizations and all of a sudden you know the feminists started saying that's sexist you can't have those this and that and so it started out as this thing where it was just supposed to be men drinking beer having fun and believe in loving America and think that the West is the best but as Antifa started cropping up and as Antifa started creating all kinds of trouble. The Proud Boys, what they started to do was they started to go and escort conservative speakers into universities or, or wherever they were speaking. Because Antifa would always show up and try to shut down the speech. And this was in like 2017, 18-ish. And the Proud Boys would go in and they just try to defend people. And so they, by and large, would not start fights. But they would finish them if Antifa started them. But of course, Antifa got a pass from the media constantly while the Proud Boys were vilified as a violent gang, even though most of what the Proud Boys did was basically run protection for conservatives. And sure, you had some brawls in the streets, and whenever you have that kind of animosity, that back and forth between two different factions, you're going to have situations where not one, one side isn't going to be the aggressor 100% of the time. So there, there probably were a few instances when when the Proud Boys were the aggressors or that kind of thing. But by and large, it was like an inverse. So if, if you know, Q, uh, I mean, sorry, I'm, I got the QAnon thing right in front of me, so I keep looking at it and repeating Q. Um, so if Antifa were to, you know, start, say, 80% of the fights, Proud Boys might start 20s. They're, they're inversions of each other. But by and large, the Proud Boys were defending people, and they were, you know, praising traditional American, uh, traditional American exceptionalism and that kind of thing, while Antifa was trying to burn the American flag. Yet for some reason, the media were Antifa were media darlings, and the Proud Boys were absolutely vilified. We're starting to see that now with the whole QAnon thing, and it's really disingenuous because we sat there for three years while the mainstream media espoused absolute conspiracy theories about Donald Trump and Russian collusion, going so far as to say that he's been a Russian agent since the 1980s. And then we had them jump from that 
onto uh, onto the Ukrainian scandal, which was really a scandal that was trying to cover up the Bidens and cover up the Democrats and what they were doing with Ukrainian aid and how they were sending billions of dollars of Ukrainian aid, knowing that it was going to be stolen by the by the Ukrainian oligarchs and were likely getting money kicked back under the table for that aid. We're still waiting on, on the Durham investigation. I think he's going to be covering a good bit of that because it's the source of the, the Russian collusion narrative. So the idea that, that, that QAnon, which is, it is, like I said, I have looked into it and I know a good deal about it. Do I believe all of it? No, not really. Do I think some of it is is onto something? Absolutely. It's not it, It's not all 100% one way or the other. Um, but they're now treating QAnon as this crazy, insane conspiracy thing while they've been pushing conspiracy theories for the last four years. These people need a mirror held up to them. And so we now have bipartisan lawmakers introduce House resolution condemning QAnon cult. It's not a cult. It's not a cult. In fact, it's mostly Christians. It's 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 mostly most of the people that believe and espouse QAnon ideals are evangelical Christians. So it's it's really an insult to call it a cult when it is actually rooted or, or mostly comprised of people who are the founding religion of this country so that is that is absurd so let's see let's see the gaslighting that they have here so after president trump declined to announce far-right QAnon conspiracy theorists last week democratic rep tom malinowski and republican rep denver riggleman on tuesday introduced a bipartisan resolution in the u.s house condemning QAnon and rejecting the conspiracy theories it promotes did we get any kind of House resolution condemning the Russiagate conspiracy theory? Do we have any House resolutions condemning the the new postal justice workers conspiracy theory? No, we don't. That is because we have a double standard. Do we have do we have a House resolution condemning Bigfoot or flat earth conspiracy theories? No, we don't. The only reason that we have a House resolution passing a Q conspiracy theory resolution is because it is pro-Donald Trump and because they believe that Donald Trump is actually doing good things. This is the establishment, both on, on both the Republican and the Democratic side of the aisle, doing everything that they can to oust Donald Trump. That's what this is about. This has nothing to do with conspiracy theories or things being true or things being false. But if you were to Google, if you were to Google QAnon and you were to look up, uh, and if you were to Google QAnon and look at any mainstream article about it, they all use the same terminology. They all call it a baseless conspiracy theory. While there are certainly parts of it that are a little out there that I that I, I look at, and I'm kind of like, I don't know about this. But it's also not everybody because it's not a monolithic movement. It's not. There there are people that that think parts of it are valid and parts of it are not, and that's kind of where I fall in. Um, you know, I do think that we have a human trafficking issue, and I do think that we have a pedophilia issue. And you, you, all you have to do is look into the news and see all of the arrests, massive arrests that have happened with child porn rings, um, tra trafficking rings, all of that. There have actually been a massive amount of arrests made in that field. So you can't look at it and say that it's baseless. Does that mean all the elements of it are true? No, but it's not baseless. So, let's go ahead and read this. Key facts. Our aim is to uh, is to full hold on. Our aim is a fully bipartisan congressional repudiation of this dangerous anti-Semitic conspiracy mongering cult. Listen to that rhetoric. First of all, you as a Democrat who are backing the Black Lives Matter riots and refusing to condemn them have no business calling anybody who has not committed acts of violence dangerous. Okay? Let's get that clear right now. Anti-Semitic. It is not anti-Semitic. There's nothing anti-Semitic about it. And sure, it might attract some kind of loony nut job type people who are into the whole idea of conspiracy theories just because of sort of the cryptic nature of it all. And sure, some of it is a little conspiratorial, but there is also stuff that you can research and find right, right out in the open. So it's not entirely baseless. 
and conspiracy mongering cult, again, with the cult that the FBI says is radicalizing Americans to violence. Hold on, full stop. Radicalizing Americans to violence? These are people on the right that believe in law and order. And you are going to sit here and say that it is radicalizing Americans to violence as we have Black Lives Matter, Antifa burning down major cities. And yet the media constantly refers to them as peaceful protests. They refer to them as protests and demonstrators. They never refer to them as rioters unless they absolutely have to. But they do everything in their power to cover up the actual violence that is going on in this country. And it is not because of QAnon. It is because of Marxist ideology that has plagued all of our cultural institutions. So this is infuriating. This is absolutely dishonest. Although the legislation is mainly symbolic, a vote in the House will require lawmakers to go on record regarding whether they condemn QAnon. Again, they did not do this for anything else. In fact, when we, when Republicans tried to pass a a um what what is it a, a resolution condemning anti-Semitism, na naming o naming Ilhan Omar, the Democrats refused to do it. They made it a broader thing about about condemning racism and hatred and bigotry in any form, and they refuse to call out Ilhan Omar. These people are evil because they will look you in the eye and lie to you non-stop. They, they will tell you that there is no violence going on. Um, who, who was it? Jerry Nadler. What Fle Fleckus Talks approached Jerry Nadler and asked him about Antifa. And Jerry Nadler had the gall to say on video that Antifa is a hoax. That it's not a real thing. I'm sorry, but we have the internet. We can see the videos. We can see what happened in Kenosha the other day. Car dealerships being burned down. Businesses being torched. We saw cops taking bricks to the back of their heads. And you're going to tell me that that's, a, that that's a conspiracy theory. That that's a hoax. This is insane. You wonder why we get all of these people who are buying into conspiracy theories? It's because we know that the media lies to us. We know that we cannot trust a single word the media says. And then they want to go crazy because we go elsewhere for our information. And sometimes that information's good, sometimes it's not. But maybe, just maybe, if the media had not abandoned any sense of integrity that it had, then we wouldn't be in this place where everybody is going to the internet and finding these things that, again, some of it's real, some of it's not. But you no longer get to be the gatekeeper when you have constantly, constantly lied to us. No. All right. Twice last week, uh, Trump was asked directly about the conspiracy theory and twice refused to denounce the group. Last Wednesday, when a reporter informed Trump that QAnon followers believe the president is secretly saving the world from a cult of pedophiles and cannibals, which is an asinine way to put it. It's, it's, they, they take the most insane, like, like, like kind of the craziest parts of it, the, the, the most bizarre sounding parts and they, and they phrase it in the most bizarre way to make it sound as crazy as possible. When, I mean, we, we've seen Michael Flynn out there, you know, you know, <clears throat> uh, excuse me, um, saying where we go one, we go all and that kind of thing. Michael Flynn. So. I don't want to hear this shit. This is all about Trump. That is what this is about. They are condemning it and they are going after it because it is a pro-Trump movement. So last week, when a reporter informed Trump that QAnon uh, uh, believed that he was secretly saving the world from a cult of pedophiles and cannibals, Trump claimed he hadn't heard that before adding, if I can help save the world from problems, I'm willing to do it. What's wrong with that? We want a president who's willing to 
help solve problems in this world. Especially when it comes to things like, like pedophilia. And you want to tell me that, that it's baseless to think that there are a bunch of powerful pedophiles running around? Excuse me. Jeffrey Epstein exists. Jeffrey Epstein was... There are tons of rich and powerful people connected to Epstein that are on his flight logs, that have been to his island. And you're going to tell me that this is baseless? Look, like I said, I am not some Q-waving person. But I do understand when I'm being absolutely gaslit by the media. And that only makes me want to look into QAnon even further. That only makes me believe in QAnon even more. Because it makes me think that if this is such a threat... Who is it a threat to? Because they're not out there committing violence. And if it is about Donald Trump draining the swamp, which it is, then who is the threat to? It's to the establishment. It is to the swamp. And why would they be going so nuts about this if they didn't think that it was going to help get Trump reelected and help Trump further drain the swamp? This is about power. That is all this is about. So Trump went on to praise QAnon supporters, claiming they love America. It's true. They call themselves patriots. They, they, it is a patriot movement. Above anything. Above all the like weird cannibal stuff that some, pe that some people in the movement espouse. It is a patriot movement. Which is one of the reasons why I don't dislike it. You know, I mean, like I said, I don't think it's all right. But I don't think it's all wrong either. But I do like seeing that is engendering a sense of patriotism among people. And for that, I won't condemn it. I won't call it crazy or baseless. It is good to see Americans standing up and fighting the establishment, fighting the established powers. So maybe they don't get everything right. Big deal. Um, Trump went on to praise QAnon supporters claiming they love America and added, I understand that they like me very much, which I appreciate. And again, that is what this is about. Because they like Donald Trump. That is it. That is all this is about. The FBI has identified QAnon conspiracy theorists as extremists who pose a domestic terrorism threat. Well, you know what else the FBI did? They also tried to overthrow Donald Trump. They tried to form a, they, they tried to stage a coup against him. They were part and parcel of the entire Obamagate plan to sink the Trump presidency. So key background. QAnon conspiracy theory is believed to have started on the anonymous message bo uh, board platform 4chan in 2017. Q supporters claim Donald Trump is defending the planet from a collection of Hollywood actors, liberal politicians, and deep state government officials who are running secret child sex trafficking ring. Okay. Let's let's just um let's just scratch this who are running a secret childhood se uh, child sex trafficking ring and let's just say defending the planet from a collection of Hollywood actors, liberal politicians and deep state government officials. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can buy into that right away. I can buy into that right away. Because we do need to be safe from these Hollywood actors and liberal politicians and deep state government actors. That stuff I do believe in. Um, and you, you want to tell me that there, there are no child sex trafficking rings? We've already seen Nexium be taken down. We've already seen Jeffrey Epstein be, be, be taken down. We know that there is a massive pedophile issue in Hollywood. We hear actors talk about it all the time. So to tell us that, this is, that, that there's no issue here is absolute gaslighting. And we also know that Donald Trump has passed resolutions, executive orders, targeting corruption and trafficking and human rights abuses so we know that this has been part of trump's agenda because he, he doesn't do things for no reason he doesn't write an executive order just to put it on the books and say oh well i did that that's good trump is a man of action so we know that donald trump is actually fighting this not only because of that but because we've also heard him talk about it we just saw in the plan that he put out his agenda for his second term that part of it is dismantling human trafficking rings And the fact that they are pushing so hard against this, pushing so hard to make people believe that none of this is real, that none of this is happening, only makes people believe it more. Because why can you not engage honestly 
and say that, yes, we do have issues with child trafficking and with human trafficking. Why can they not say that? Because we can see verifiably that we do have those issues. But the fact that they won't even cover that means that how if we can't trust you to even cover that, how are we going to trust you to be honest about QAnon? We can't. And then you wonder why these movements grow. It's, it, it, it's flabbergasting, really. All right, surprisingly, the theory has... Surprisingly, the theory has gained mainstream traction over the last few months. Trump has retweeted four congressional candidates who have promoted QAnon, helping them rack up hundreds of thousands of followers on Twitter, Forbes reported last week. So what? So what? Who cares? Let, the, let them have their beliefs. This is America. We have freedom of speech. We have the ability to have views, even if they are a little bit crazy. You have the, you, you have the right to have crazy views and espouse them and talk about them. Um, so recently, several prominent Republicans, including federal, uh, former federal governor, uh, for, former Florida governor, George Bush promoted, um, sorry, I, I just got, I just heard my, my, I've had a couple things go on here that, that just, just distracted me. So hold on. Recently, several prominent Republicans, including uh, former Florida governor, Jeb Bush, former Bush White House press secretary Ari Fleischer and Rep. Adam Kinzinger of Illinois criticized pre the president for his refusal to denounce the group emphatically. Well, gee, I wonder why. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing, isn't it, that the people that they go to are the Bushes, people who are part of the entire establishment. We don't trust, I mean, like the, the, the Trump era Republicans don't trust the Bushes any more than we trust the Clintons. We don't. We don't trust the establishment. That's why we support Donald Trump is because he's in there draining the swamp and trying to get rid of the old guard who, whether you're QAnon or not, whether you're QAnon or just a regular Trump supporter, you believe that we have been taken advantage of by the establishment for too damn long. And that's the crux of it. It is pro-Trump, which means it's anti-establishment. And of course, the, the 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 Republicans that they bring to the table are the swamp monsters. Jeb Bush, what a joke! Senator Ben Sass of Nebraska told the Washington Post that QAnon is nuts, and real leaders call conspiracy theories conspiracy theories. Denver Riggleman, uh, okay, well, all right, my, my computer is having some issues. Um, Denver Riggleman, who introduced the legislation today called QAnon Conspiracies, a danger and a threat that has no place in our country's politics. Okay, well, why don't you start why don't you start condemning some of these Marxist groups? The Black Lives Matter. Condemn them. They are the ones that are actually burning down our cities, that are burning American flags, the ones that are talking about abolishing our police, abolishing our prison system, abolishing everything that America is. And you want to talk about patriots being a threat? This is this is insane. The, these are the people that need to go. Um, Brigelman added, "I condemn this movement and urge all Americans to join me in taking the steps to include them and in other extreme conspiracy theories from national discourse." I'm sorry, but we have freedom of speech. You cannot exclude people from the national discourse, especially if it is a large group of people. We have a, people have the right. We as Americans have the right to talk about whatever we want to talk about. Exclu excluding people from the discourse is exactly why we don't trust you. And this is going to draw more people to QAnon than anything. You, 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 can't, you can't hide ideas. If they were completely, completely baseless, you would not have millions upon millions of people believing in them. That is that is the crux of it. I've, I've said that about five times. This is the crux of it. I, I mean, there, there's, there's a lot to it. But, you know, if, if this was as baseless and as insane and as crazy as they say it is, then you would not have this many people going into it that are finding it from what was the fringes. Something, you know... 
you, you, you can have crazy things that everybody believes that are being pushed by the mainstream media. We've seen that through the whole Russiagate situation. We've seen that through this whole post office thing. We've seen that through all of Donald Trump's presidency, to be honest. But you don't see things go from the fringe that, that seem kind of kooky, and then all of a sudden they start making sense to people. You don't see that happening if it's entirely baseless. Again, I'm not some huge Q person, but I don't like being gaslit on it. And I do think that there are things that Q talks about, that the, that the people that follow Q talk about, that are real issues. I just don't necessarily go as far as a lot of those people do. Or, or not even a lot, some of the people. So, tangent. Last Wednesday, Facebook announced it removed 790 groups, 100 pages, and 1,500 ads connected to QAnon, while also restricting over 10,000 accounts on Instagram, according to NBC News. A recent inter uh, internal investigation by Facebook determined that QAnon had millions of members and followers on the social platform. And that's the point that I was making. You don't gain millions of members or millions of followers from the fringes. You can get millions of people believing in lies if they're espoused by the, the, by the legacy media, which, we, which we've seen. That is essentially the entire democratic base at this point. They have bought into absolute lies, but they're pushed by mainstream credible sources. And now you get people getting news from non-mainstream, you know, not, not quote-unquote credible sources, and they want to tear it all down because it is a threat to the establishment. Surprising fact, Eric Trump, President Trump's middle son and campaign surrogate, promoted QAnon in an Instagram post in June. The post showed an American flag with the message and letter Q, the symbol for the fake, I mean, for the conspiracy theory. The, pro, uh, the, the bottom of the, the photo included the group slogan where we go one, we go all. Maybe that should tell you something. If we even have people like Michael Flynn or an Eric Trump not you know, actually promoting it. Maybe they know something that you don't. Or maybe they know something that you're trying to hide. Critical quote. After, after calling neo-Nazis and white supremacists Charlottesville, they are lying to you. This is why we don't believe the mainstream media. After calling neo-Nazis and white supremacists in Charlottesville very fine people, that is a lie. Donald Trump, on the spot, denounced all the white supremacists and all of the neo-Nazis. Yet they will lie to you and tell you, and to this day, Joe Biden still runs his campaign on that lie. So, you know what? It, 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 even if QAnon is some crazy conspiracy theory and none of it's true, this is what you deserve, media. This is what you deserve, establishment. You deserve to be taken down by whatever whether it's QAnon, whatever. Because you're lying, and you know you're lying. And tear-gassing peaceful protesters. Look at this. Look at this. So after calling neo-Nazis and white supremacists in Charlottesville fine people and tear-gassing peaceful protesters following the murder of George Floyd. Let that sink in. Let it sink in how brazen they are, or how brazen, brazenly they just lie to your face. Donald Trump just sought to legitimize a conspiracy theory that the FBI has identified as a domestic terrorism threat. Yeah, well, guess what? We don't trust the FBI anymore because of what they did to Trump. Okay? Everything that they put against us have already sullied their reputations. Everything that they put against Trump, everything that they put against conservatives, everything that they put against just regular mainstream right of center people, not even talking about QAnon. Y'all have lost your credibility. Y'all have lost any sort of influence you could possibly have over us. Because of shit like this. Because of perpetuating the neo not the, the, the very fine people on both sides lie. Perpetuating the peaceful protesters lie. <sighs> oh, and that came from a, a, a spokesman from the Biden campaign. This is a joke.
This is a joke. Okay, yeah, it's... You know, there, there was a funny thing going on. It, it was ac it was actually from We the Internet TV with Lou Perez, who I, I actually I actually know Lou Perez. Um, I actually worked with the organization that funds We the Internet TV. It, I worked I worked with them a while back. Um, so he put out he put out this thing called um, "Stop Making Me Defend Trump," and it was funny because it was true. You didn't have not, you weren't you didn't you weren't necessarily a Trump supporter. But you constantly had to defend them against lies because at the end of the day, you still don't want it, you still don't want your attacks against somebody to be rooted in lies. Well, right now it's like you're making me defend QAnon because you're lying about it. So I, I mean, I would love to have a more even keeled approach where I can say, yes, the, the, some of it some of it is good information and some of it is, re reflects things that are that are true issues, things that we need to be keeping an eye on, and some of it is a little out there. Some of it is a little crazy for me. I don't I don't buy into all of that stuff. But you're making me defend the entire thing because you're lying about the entire thing. So, you know what? I'm done with this. I hope I mean whatever, whatever. You know, guys, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. We need more people out here speaking truth and 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 not gaslighting and lying. I will I will flat out say that some of the stuff in QAnon is a little crazy. I will flat out I will flat out admit that, but I will also say that some of it is spot on. Some of it is tackling real issues, but it's anti-establishment, it's pro-America, and it's pro-Trump, and those are the three big reasons why they want to kill it. Anyways, guys, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Parlor at Ram Thorburn. If you're interested in, in uh, contributing to the channel, there are links to my subscribe star Patreon and PayPal in the description below. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful night.